Two rakat tonight. Two rakat only if it is done sincerely with pure heart and sincere intention. It's like you've done or you do a lot of rakat for a thousand months. One sadaka, so ever khair that one does on a night of Qadr, not only salah, even sadaka. Orphanages, we have so many orphanages I mentioned last night. And I encourage you to dig out into your pocket and support some of these good charity organizations who are reaching out to the poor ones, who are reaching out to those who are less advantaged. If you give sadaka tonight, on a night of Qadr, you will be given the reward of giving sadaka for a thousand months. If you recite one verse of Quran, the same reward you're gonna get. I mean, Allah is so merciful to us, Allah. There is no merciful Lord than our beloved Lord. Companions of Rasulullah came to Rasulullah and they were telling Rasulullah, of course, this is one of the reasons as to why this verse was revealed. And there are other reasons. And they were describing one man from Bani Israel. That this man, he worked tirelessly in the way of Allah for about a thousand months. Working in the way of Allah. Establishing the true teachings of monotheism. Then Allah revealed unto Holy Prophet. Why are you worried, O oh my Sahaba? Laylatul Qadri Khairul Minimal Thousand months fine. But you've been given only one night. That one night. If you make good use of it, Khairun is not saying equivalent to al fishar huh? He said Khairun min al fishar It's better than thousand months. And then, and then the next, next one, Allah said, Tanazzalu al malaikatu wa ruhu fiha. The same thing in Arabic. When you Tanazzalu al malaika, Tanazzal is filu mudari. It's a continuous tense. It's not past tense. It's not Nazalat al malaika. That the angels came down and that's it. He said, The angels continue to come down. And here yes, scholars in Tafasir of Quran, they said, Why Allah use continuous tense? It's because. They began coming during the lifetime of Rasulullah on the night of Qadr and they will continue coming down each and every night of Qadr until the day of Qiyamah. Angels will keep on coming. Therefore Allah said, Malaika. And not only Malaika, Waruhu fiha. Our beloved Sif Imam made it very clear. What is Ruh? Imam Jafar said, Ar-Ruhu a'adhamu min al-Malaika. Ruh is higher and greater than Malaika. Some scholars say this is the Ruh that Allah sent to prophets of Allah to strengthen them to either do miracle or to continue loving Allah where Allah says about Isa alayhi salam, وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ some said it's Jibra'il, but Imam Jabbar said, no, Allah said, malaika wa ruhu fi'a. Since he says malaika, Jibra'il is part of malaika. So ruh is a unique creature of Allah who will come tonight and help us and support us and strengthen us in the course of our amal and take our message to our beloved Imams alayhi salatu wassalam. Therefore, some scholars said, Ar-Ruh masdaru rizq wa masdaru sa'ada. Ruh is the source of the rizq you'll be asking for tonight. It's the source of the afia, the health you'll be asking tonight. It's the source of the blessings that you'll be asking tonight. Because I know all of us sitting here, we have our needs. There are so many things I'm sure we've prepared to ask Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So the ruh coming, it is a blessing for the ummah of Rasulullah. Alayhi ala fatahiyyati wa alibayti al-isma wa tahara. And then of course the last one is what? Salamun here. Now you see on this night, beginning of this night is salam, and the ending of the night is salam. Which sort of salam is this? This is salam from angels. Allah sent angels to us to pass salam unto us. 
This salam is a very unique salam. You see, in Quran, Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, when the people of Jannah go to Jannah, Allah will send salam to them. Salam on kawl al min rabbi. Salam. That salam of Allah to the servant of Allah will be in Jannah is better than whatever is in Jannah. It's not only that. Even people before they go to Jannah, salamun alaykum tiptum fadkhuluha khalidin. Before you go to Jannah, Allah will send angels salam unto you. Salam unto you. Tip tom, you are fortunate. Fadkhuluha khalidin. Enter permanently into this Jannah. Is that all? No. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was in fire, what made the fire called the salam of malaika? Of course, from Allah. He said, Ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. That salam on the fire made the fire cold. So tonight also in this night of Qadr, there will be the salam of the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right from the beginning of the night up until Fajr, the angel will be saying salam, 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 salam. Salam to each and every one of us. Now in conclusion. Apart from this salam that the angels will be passing unto each and every one of us, what will be their major role and responsibility tonight? What we say our topic is the central role of angels on the night of Qadr. They play a crucial role on the night of Qadr. And to understand that, we go a little bit back to Quran. You see, when you look at Quran, Quran always talks about earth and heaven. Khalaka samawati wal ard, for instance. Or oh, one ayah, يُسَبِّهُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah always will talk about the earth and the heaven. Now let's look at heaven, uh, earth. Why always Allah talking about earth? He said Allah talks about earth because earth is the headquarters of Prophet of Allah and Awliya of Allah. Prophets of Allah, this is their headquarters. So therefore, Allah will never forget about the earth. This is where prophets and our imams alayhi salatu was salam are. And this is where they play their role. And one of the major role of our prophets is that they are witness over our deeds and actions. Look at Musa. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئِنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئِنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا Allah talks about Musa alayhi salam that Musa witnessed over the actions of his people. Not only Musa, our beloved prophets. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَ لِتَكُونُوا شُحَدَى عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Rasul is shaheed. He witnessed over all our deeds and all over us. Our, over our actions. The same thing we have ayah which talks about Isa, Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam. فَكُنْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ Isa said, I was witness over all the hadith and action. But when Allah, you've taken me from this dunya, you then become witness over the action. So therefore, one of the crucial role of the prophets is to witness over all our actions. Tonight, we are coming to display actions. Actions of ibadah. Actions of a'amal. What, who will witness our action? Imam Jafar explained alayhi alaf al-tahiyyati wa salam. Inna a'amalakum tu'radu alayna fi sahaifin min kibali al-malaiqah. Imam Jafar. Imam Jafar alayhi salatu wa salam said, your deeds and your actions are shown to us by the angels of Allah. So the crucial role of the angels tonight when they come and you are serious with your amal and you are attentive towards the amal and you are sincere in doing the amal, that angel will show your deeds to the Imam of our time. Imam Zaman will witness our deeds and actions tonight. Therefore, angels, when they come, apart from saying salam, they will.
will convey our salam to the imam of our time and they will tell our imam fulan fulan ali scotland muhammad moglo jawad they are here making ibadah making a'mal they is making a'mal all our names would be mentioned by the angels and our beloved imam of the time will see the names of his beloved and those who love him and follow him and imam will be happy to see names of all of us by the end of tonight and lastly brothers and sisters in our riwayah as we all know there are three possible nights Yes, we mentioned earlier on, seek for the night of Qadr or look for it in the last ten nights. But the three nights, we have a riwaya from Imam, alayhi salatu wasalam, our beloved Sifi Imam. Night of the 19th, night of the 21st, and night of the 23rd. And our riwaya strongly is on the night of the 23rd, like tonight. Therefore, if you read some of our riwayah, this night is called the night of Johanni. Johanni was one desert dweller who always wanted to go to Medina. And he would ask the only prophet of Islam, peace be upon him and his family, Which is, when is the best time for me to go to Medina? He would always ask Rasulullah. The Rasulullah one day told him the best night to enter Medina is the night of the 23rd of Ramadan. So therefore you read certain riwayat that night is named after him the night of Johanni. Imam Jafar said the first night is Laylatul Takdir. 19th. Is the night of Takdir. Takdir simply means you put a khutaj. You lay the foundation of what you want and what you want to give away your sons you have to give away your sons and the second night which is the night of 19 is Laylatul Ibrahim some call it Laylatul Qadha that is the night where Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will look at our faces and look at how we came together in the mosque of Husayniya for the A'mal and for the Ibadah and Allah will sanction whatever action that we undertake on that night tonight is the night of they call it laylatul ibram it is the night of authority and approval of allah allah is going to approve tonight so maybe you ask something on the first night and on the second night you insisted a little bit on it tonight insist more and as i mentioned if you truly want allah to accept your dua and to forgive you do tawbatan nasuha sincere repentance tawbatan nasuha musuri sincere repentance sincere repentance required certain conditions number one before we begin with the a'mal regret your past let's all do that regret your past number two pledge that i'm going to be good tonight is the last night who knows where when whether i will be alive next year Pledge, this is based on the teachings of Amir al-Mu'mini. Pledge, Ya Allah, I will not go back again. I used not to wear hijab, from tonight my hijab will be intact. I used to be lazy when it comes to my salat establishment, from tonight, no. I used to take unlawful substance, from tonight, over. List them, bring them out, outline them, pledge. I will never go back to them again. I want to be a new person after the holy month of Ramadan. 
I want to be a person who yearns for Allah and His presence in his life. So number two, pledge. These are conditions for the acceptance of our dua and makfir. Number three, you pay your wajibat. What do I mean by wajibat? How many salat you owe? How many fast you owe? How many hajj you owe? Probably. How much khums you owe? For instance. I'm not saying pay it tonight. It's not possible. It's not practical. <laughs> Pledge. Make a plan in your mind. Strategic planning. That inshallah, from tonight, I'm going to start paying back what I owe slowly but surely based on my capability. Allah is happy with that. Number four. Hukuku nas. People's rights. You've taken, You've taken somebody's, somebody's wealth. You've, You've taken, taken somebody's, somebody's valuable. Think, Think of paying it back. Give it back, back to the person. Or send him a message. Let's reconcile. I will give it to you. Or else you will come make it to our amal go. It doesn't have any positive impact in our lives, unfortunately. And then number five, we should be ready to forgive those who have wronged us if you want Allah to forgive you. Should be ready. Are you ready? Somebody has wronged you. Are you ready to forgive? If you do not forgive, Allah will not forgive you. <laughs> we need to be willing to forgive whoever has wronged us. Then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will forgive us. Then after that, after when these five are met, then you say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayh. Once you do astaghfirullah after these conditions, Allah will accept your dua. And of course, in one riwayah, Rasulullah mentioned that don't go Laylatul Qadr when you are not in talking terms with a mu'min. I'm not talking to you, you're not talking to me. Now we come together in the most crying and pleading with Allah. When I don't want to reconcile with you. Therefore, the first two rak'ah we do, it has significance. And we have teachings about these two rak'ah. One fadila of the two rak'ah is that whoever does the two rak'ah before the a'mal, he will be forgiven and his parents will be forgiven. So when we are asked to do two rak'ah, let's all stand, rise up and do the two rak'ah. And also we recite these three chapters of Quran. Rome, Ankabut, and Dukhan. We have a riwayat from Al Bayt as to why we recite. No time to belabor the point. But the common riwayat we have is that one riwayat said whoever recites Surah to Rome on a night of Qadr, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will ask the angels who are between the earth and the heaven to ask for forgiveness on his or her behalf. But understanding the meaning of the chapter, because he's talking about the sincere servant of Allah. Allah wants you to be sincere. He wants you to be a proud servant, like the way Imam Amir al muminin was a proud servant of Allah. And then of course, the other two chapters we have also rewired. Whoever recite them in an ankabot and dukhan, wajabat lahul jannah. Jannah becomes wajib, obligatory upon him to enter. But definitely just reciting surah al dukhan alif lam is not going to work out. Look at the meanings because they come on PowerPoint. And it's so important you understand what you are reciting. We are not here to recite the dua for the sake of reciting the dua. We are here to recite the dua and our amal so we obtain what we ask Allah and it has positive effect on our life. So Imam said if you recite these two chapters, then Allah wa will grant you Jannatul Firdaus.